Ray Harrison. I am Director of Corporate Communication for Dixon Hughes Goodman, a U.S. Top 20 accounting firm headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I'm a, a member of AIM and a former board member, and I've had the pleasure of working with our Executive Director, Lauren Klimmer, for a few years now, and I'm super excited to have her with us today to talk about some of the um, marketing trends for 2017. I know that um, we are digging deep in here at Dixon Hughes Goodman. We've got our marketing plan. We're working through it. Um, and we're beginning to plan for what we consider our fiscal 2018. And for that, we, we take into consideration what are trends, what are coming up. So this is a great opportunity for me to sit down with Lauren and learn a little more. Welcome, Lauren. It's great to see, see you, talk to you. Um, it's great to be here and talk about the, the uh, marketing trends. We've uh, done some work over the past few months and we've solicited some feedback uh, from our members as well as our Environmental Scanning Council. And um, we've identified some trends that we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so the first one is technology, which is quite comical because if you two, if you audience could have seen the two of us trying to figure out this recording, you would see that maybe we need to learn a little more about technology. Anyway, um, marketing technology is taken off. Um, many firms are adding new staff to play a more technology focused role. Can you talk a little bit about what this role looks like and what the main objectives of this function is? Of course. Um, so I believe high growth firms are embracing technology. Um, they're hiring more specialized positions in general. At least that's what I'm hearing. Um, the best example I have is Michelle Justinson and Armin Nino, who holds the title of marketing technology manager. Mm -hmm. um, she's responsible for ensuring their work solutions work and play together. And um, Armanino really pushes the envelope when it comes to technology. I feel like they lead us in many ways mm -hmm. um, to, to what they're doing. Um, other roles that may not have the title but hold the responsibility and work, um, hold the responsibility, work with IT to make it all work. Um, IDC says the worldwide spend on marketing software is going to grow by 50% to 32.3 billion in 2018. And Gartner's saying that the CMO will spend more on IT than the, C um, the CTO will spend more on IT than the CMO, so firms better be ready. Yeah. Um, if, they aren't, if you're not investing, you really should be. Yeah, so I'll just speak for Dixon Hughes Goodman here for a minute. Um, we actually have combined our technology department and our marketing department, and they um, operate under the same umbrella under our chief information officer. Um, and so we, um, we definitely see this as a trend and are responding to it by, um, by really um, taking these two, two different functions and putting them in a space where they don't operate in silos. And I think that's gonna be critical moving forward. So um, marketing automation, you, you mentioned Ar Armanino a minute ago. They, they've always been leading the curve in automation. Um, it's been around for a long time, but it seems to be a hot trend right now. So what do the firms hope to do with this? And do you believe that, um, this is my question. I really, do you believe that a client is going to be, a potential client could actually be moved to action through something that's automated? So it's, um, to your point, it's been around for a while and firms are looking to engage, are looking for better ways to engage their audiences and digital really provides a way for us to target that audience and get feedback on how people are responding. I talked to a vendor yesterday about our own email system and uh, feedback that we could get that could make us a more, um, more effective in the way we're delivering messages to our members. So, um, and I think the other thing you have to take into consideration is, you know, this, the younger generation, the millennials, the Gen Xers, the Gen Y, the Gen Z, um, they're all used to technology. Mm -hmm. you know, we may like to say, you know, we're not reaching our audience because of technology. We get too, too many emails, whatever the case may be. But look around you, everybody's on it. Everybody's paying attention to it. 
people are using like social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, our own president is, is on Twitter. So, um, you know, that it's just another way to reach people. And I do believe it's the way of the future and the way the clients are going to interact with us because they too are getting younger yeah. and this is the way they interact with each other. So I, I think it's very important um, because they grew up with technology and embrace it. And I think we need to, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one thing that that plays a major role in the automation is CRM. I do not operate in the CRM space in corporate communications, but I know that it is a critical um, component to us tracking our pipeline. So, uh, you know, th this this is a no brainer to me. We've had CRM for a really long time. But why, why has it taken firms so long to make this a priority? And what does the future look like um, as it relates to CRM? Um, I, think, I think why it's taken them so long to embrace it is, um, is the cost, A, the cost. I mean, the cost for a CRM is not for the faint at heart. Um, because not only is it the software, but it's you have to change the culture you have to embrace it from the top and push it through the organization it's not unlike erp back in the day um was to you know corporate america and um firms look at it and get sticker shock and so they get scared but now i think they're finally realizing that in order to really manage the data and, um, you know, as they're moving forward with more business developers and looking at ways to increase their business and reach, they're realizing that a CRM system is something that they need um, to be able to be more effective in, in marketing and re reaching out. So, uh, you know, I think the tide's turning. I think it's slow. I think it depends on the size of the firm and the resources they have to throw at it. Um, and I think, you know, again, it's, it's not for the faint at heart and it's not just the software. You really need somebody to manage that database and keep it clean. Yeah. Um, and it's really important bringing the data across that the data is clean. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a great undertaking yeah. and you have to be willing to stay the course. Absolutely. So this kind of segues nicely to business development, and there seems to be a lot more focus on business development and soft skill training for the professionals. Um, why do you think that this has become a heightened focus as of recent, um, and what makes this different than previous years? Well, again, I think firms are looking at ways to bring business in and realizing that not all accountants um, have the skills to um, speak the language and to bring business in and they need the assistance of a business developer to help pave the way and to get the deal to the table so that then you can have the technical support that the accountant is so good at. Mm -hmm. um, I know myself as a salesperson, I always brought my technical person with me because I could build the relationship, but I needed him, he, him, him or her to um, really explain the technical aspects of it. And we were a team and building it. And I think firms are building more teams within business development. And that's why you're seeing the soft skills training, because I think they're also understanding that everybody needs to sell and everybody needs to understand it. And so it behooves them to train as many people as possible, not just the business developer. So do you think that it's necessary for firms to bring in consultants to help with these trainings? Or do you think that this is something that the marketing business development professionals in their um, offices can help with? I think it depends. I think it depends on the firm and what they're trying to accomplish. Um, I think, I believe that there are times when a consultant can bring a new um, it can help you uh, tell, talk to you about how to build a pipeline, what kind of reports to have, um, and really pave the way. If a firm is more confident in those areas and they have people on staff that can train in, internally, 
that's great. But sometimes I think you do need to bring a consultant in that brings a fresh perspective. And also, it's a new voice that they're going to hear. It's sort of like the parent talking to the kid. Yes. Where they tune you out. I think sometimes a consultant can be that new voice that, you know, brings a fresh perspective. That's exactly right. Um, so I'm going to switch gears a bit. One of the areas that we um, as a firm are focused heavily on is our advisory and consulting services, and they're some of our fastest growing areas. Um, they are the next frontier for accounting firms. And so my question is, what can marketers do to play a role in bringing this to the forefront of their firms? I think what marketers bring is the ability to dig into the data and to show firms where there are opportunities for them outside of the traditional um, services that they provide. Because I think I, what I've heard in many of the conferences I've, I've, I've attended recently is where the growth is for firms is in the advisory services and the consulting areas because that's what companies need. They need you to um, understand their business and bring fresh ideas to them and fully support them. It's about the relationship and it's about expanding the relationship. Um, I don't know that I answered your question. No, I think you did. So this is an interesting, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, so I think it's really interesting, these advisory services. Um, it has, Dick, Dixon Hughes Goodman, we've hired um, a lot of consultants that have a real technology focus, real data focus. We've hired um, people with healthcare backgrounds, such as a nurse. Um, and bringing these people on, um, we've, we've brought on non-CPAs. Um, mm -hmm. They can't be partners in the firms, but they've become principals in our firm. Um, we brought them on as directors. So how do you think the rise in non-CPA people in leadership roles in the firm is going to help elevate marketing's role in the firm as a non-CPA? Do you think it will impact it at all? I do, only because I think it shows the partners that there's another path. And um, I, we're seeing more and more of more marketers join the ranks of a shareholder, uh, whether it's a non-equity partner or sometimes they are equity partners because firms value what marketing is bringing to the table and those people in particular are contributing to the bottom line. I think that's what it takes us to be able to move into those roles and to um, expand is it's really uh, showing that we are helping to contribute to the bottom line. So one thing I mentioned earlier was um, data and, um, you know, one of our, our healthcare consulting practice has a real, um, a big data practice and data is really driving results oriented marketing. So how do you think that data is changing the way we approach marketing campaigns? Oh, I think it's changing them a lot because, I mean, it goes back to our initial talk about technology. Data is really providing a roadmap for what kind of services we should offer, who we should be targeting. Um, you know, it's helping us get very specific and focused in delivering our messages and um, determining where the right uh, what the right services are for our clients and for the firm to be successful. Uh, and I think it's a, I think it's challenging um, because if you're not collecting the right data, then you don't have, you know, you may not have um, everything you need at your fingertips, but it helps you dig in further and know, build the systems and make the data better so that you, you do have better data to uh, run your business. Yeah, so have you seen any firms hiring people who are specifically, you know, focused on data in, in the marketing department role? I personally have not, but I have to believe they're out there. Mm -hmm. Because again, it goes to, if you're putting in a CRM, you really need a database administrator mm -hmm. to manage that data. Um, so I've got to believe that. Now, as part of the marketing department, Department, 
I don't know. I mean, a lot of times that role is really more of an IT function. Mm -hmm. um, but it would make sense to have a data analyst as part of the marketing team. Yeah. I know that um, Gail Crosley promotes, and Katie Tolan too, very much looking at the data and pulling yeah. the data to, apart and um, finding, you know, better ways to go to market and, you know, where the opportunities are. So yeah. I think it's something that firms, if they're not, are probably going to st will start um, investing in. Yeah, and I think it's a natural fit for an accounting firm, obviously, in terms of looking at data and being able to analyze it. Um, so the mapping the client experience is really taken hold in 2017, and um, and and it's becoming um, a new brand standard for companies to have a standard client experience. I guess my first question is, can you define what is meant by client experience? Well, it's funny because, um, yes, I did a little digging and, you know, two people that come to mind right away are Lisa Gill and Mitch Reno. And I actually, you know, if you look at their profiles, um, it gives you a really a sense of what uh, a client experience is. It's really about expanding the relationship and being very focused on the client and they may not hold that relationship, but they're training teams on, you know, how to interact with the client, holding their toes to the fire for, um, you know, setting goals for them. Um, it's really gaining a better understanding of what the client's facing and proposing solutions to assist them. Um, if you look at, this is how Lisa Gill defines it, and I'm going to read this. What is client experience? A client experience is what is created from the interaction between an organization and a client over the duration of the relationship. The interaction includes the services and or products service level and quality of work, communications and the company, timeliness of delivery and the overall relationship. So, you know, if you, if you look at that, it's really an expanded role and it's somebody who's very focused um, because, you know, partners are focused on their piece of the business. This is somebody who's looking at the bigger picture mm -hmm. and helping the firm deliver the best experience they can for their clients. And it's going beyond, again, it goes back to going beyond the traditional services, making sure you're listening, making sure you're understanding the business, making sure you, that you're not talking just to the same people all the time, yeah. that, you know, you're expanding your reach within um, a particular client. Yeah, absolutely. So we, um, we have hired a um, director of client experience and um, are, are really um, putting some focused efforts there. Um, are you seeing other firms hire um, people who are specific to the client experience? And if so, what does the role look like? And how do you think this is going to impact the way we market? I don't know. I, I personally haven't seen it. I like, but to your point, I, you, you, you guys just hired, you just hired somebody. Um, I've seen more people like the Mitrinos and the Lisa Gills turn their former, you know, they were formerly CMOs or at a very high level in their firms and take that position and turn it into this, you know, client experience. I think they've um, paved the way for others. Mm -hmm. And I think you will see firms hiring as Dixon Hughes Goodman did. Um, yeah. and, and we're taking more of a scientific approach with it, you know, so um, our, our client experience is going to be multifaceted. Um, of course, there's a survey element to it that becomes very scientific with the data and analyzing the data and figuring out how to, you know, respond to the data. But then there's also part of that goes to those soft skills that you and I talked about earlier. And that is developing mm -hmm. um, training um, courses for our people from associate first year all the way up through partner that speak to the client experience and how to, um, you know, deliver a client experience that is exceptional always, not just sometimes and not just meeting the client's expectation, but exceeding the client's expectation. So there's this whole continuum of, of things that kind of fall under that client experience um, umbrella. 
Yeah, because you want a delight, delighted client. And, um, you know, I think sometimes accountants tend to be too very focused um, because that's who they are and how they're trained. And soft skills are a little harder, are, aren't, don't necessarily come naturally to them. Right. Um, and so I know at my firm, we put together a program where we, um, I had one, a marketer or one accountant who was very shy and we, he wanted to excel and went through, um, oh, um, Toastmasters and it improved his skills so much that we rolled out a program across the firm because my belief was you have to be able to speak to anybody at any time about anything. And, um, and so many of them can't. And it was interesting just putting that training on, you know, yeah. the people that would, cause we'd throw them a, you know, we had them um, just tear apart a financial statement and be able to talk about it right? Um, and dig deeper into the client and, they would go stone cold sometimes yeah. not being able to speak like, wait, you asked me a question. <laughs> <laughs> so these yeah. roles are very important to, you know, helping um, well round the staff and um, kind of get out of their own way and learn some new skills. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a very exciting time to be in accounting marketing. I, there's so many facets to it and things that are evolving and changing, especially in the profession. Um, that I think that, um, I think these are some of the, the top trends. And, um, I think that as I look at the, um, summit coming up in June in Las Vegas, a lot of the, um, sessions really do speak to these topics to help us continue on this path of learning more. Yeah, we've definitely spent a lot of time looking at that and listening to what, you know, listening to a, what the trends are and what, marketer mar our marketers and business developers are asking for so we tried to build a a uh, an agenda that's meaningful for everyone well i'm looking forward to it i'm looking forward to seeing you there and um, i appreciate you taking time to share your thoughts on these trends with us thank you so much alice gray i too am looking forward to it so hope to see everyone there and thank you all for tuning in Power up.